Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we are going to begin by bringing a Kerbal down to our base on the moon using this this particular lander right here. And this is going to be a little bit tricky because precision landings on the moon aren't exactly things I've practiced. I've practiced it with Kerbin's moon and uh, we've built bases on Kerbal's, uh, Kerbin's moon and landed stuff there. But uh, Earth's moon is a little bit bigger and a little bit trickier to try and get things down accurately so I need more practice with that and we'll see whether I can do it or not. Uh, we will have plenty of extra fuel. Uh, let me top it off in fact. Uh, that would be a good idea. So while I'm doing that I will mention that I have removed remote tech and we'll see what kind of benefits as far as lag is concerned that has. I've only removed the remote tech plugin, the DLL file, and that is because we still have parts from remote tech. Remote tech does add new parts and we don't want all our craft to be destroyed. So I've left the parts, just removed the plugin, and hopefully that'll work out. I didn't get any warnings when starting this save, so hopefully that's a positive sign. Okay, that tank is full. All right. Well, uh, let's have Chrislian. Now, where is Chrislian? Uh, in here. Let's have Chrislian go into there and be the pilot for this mission. Previously, Valentina had gone, and so we want to change things up. Mm, transfer crew. There we go. Okay. Uh, confirmed Chrislene is there, and Chrislene has inventory. She's got a drill and two of the connector ports, so that's handy. Okay, well, here we go. Undock. And RCS on, forward. Okay, a uh, formidable amount of Delta V here. And we will see what happens. It is a very lightweight lander pod. Uh, but it isn't really meant for the rigors of many things, I guess. Uh, it's just supposed to get us uh, from lunar orbit down to the surface quickly and without much fuss. Basically, it's like an overgrown EVA suit. That's how I think of it. Okay, Moonbase 1 is reasonably under our, our orbit, though not precisely, but we would have to wait like a, another 14 days before it was precisely under our orbit. So we're going to be using some of our fuel uh, to adjust to that particular inclination and actually turn. And we'll do that mainly during descent, I feel. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to aim for this approach here. And... Over on this side of the moon, we're going to uh, reduce our orbit down to 38 kilometers and also change our inclination to try and hit that target. And this will all cost about 300 meters per second. Initial retro burn. And let's get landing guidance set up. So we'll actually be on the way up to Apoapsis when we pass over Moonbase 1, which is sort of good. That'll give us some extra time to slow down. Bad news is it's only starting to be nighttime at the moon base. Now, of course, we're going to have a plane change to get back to the station, too. So it's a good thing we have a fair amount of fuel here. These engines do throttle, thankfully. Throttle down to 11%. So we have some leeway there. Oh, there it is. 96 kilometers in closing. Oh, okay, I think we're landing short now. Okay, that's pretty good right there. It's better to start out going a little bit long rather than coming up short. We still have plenty of fuel in order to make it back to orbit, assuming this is reading correctly, which, you know, could go either way. Ideally, we want to get to 25 meters to the base so that we can hook things up to it. We need practice doing that, but that might be optimistic for a first try here. Okay, we better focus on just slowing down and landing properly. Uh, 
Uh, I should have surface info up. Shoot. That would be important. Okay, we have landed on the surface of the moon. We have 2,600 meters per second, which is more than enough to get back to orbit. And, uh, well, let's get on with things, Chris Leon. Please occupy our moon base. Look at that waddle. Come on. What, what, what happened to the standard lunar hop? This isn't proper lunar hopping. That's not right. That's not realism overhaul. Come on. What is, what is with this? Scamper. Okay, here we go. Let's see Chris Leon occupy our very first moon base. Okay, grab and board. Uh, interesting, no boarding sound. Uh, and it's a quick saving right now. Okay, so, um, well, the, the thing is, electric charge is going to be an issue since we're on the nighttime side. It does have 231,000, but probably if we were to pay attention to it. Right now it says electricity remaining infinity because it's not being honest. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just leave it be. Christine's got more than well, almost two years worth of food, water, and oxygen, so that's great. We don't have to resupply anytime soon, and we should probably bring somebody else down to keep Chris Lee in company. So that is another thing that we have to do. So we have to launch another one of those light lunar landers. But so far, the system seems to be a success, and we'll leave, leave Chris Lee and B and get on with some other business. All right, so as it so happens, we are launching the next uh, light lunar lander to the moon. We had already finished building it and it was the next thing to do. So here we go. We're going to run the Fiji 11 script and I hope that I didn't mean to make any changes to it. Okay, uh, well maybe we should just check staging. Yeah, engine recovery enabled and that seems all right as well. Okay, here we go. The F1 is lit and twitching and the rocket is off. I did unlock the RD-270 by the way, and so there is a new configuration of the Fiji rocket with with uh, two F-1 boosters and the RD-270 at the center, so that is a thing that we will see soon. Not the Pentaborane RD-270, just a regular one with UDMH and N-204. As far as our build queue and technologies are concerned, uh, the next thing that is being constructed is Science Lab 1, the science lab for our Earth orbit station. After that, uh, another light lunar lander, just in case. Uh, perhaps we should move up Lunar Lab 1, which is the same thing for our lunar station. And then the Nerva Tug after that. On technologies, we have Advanced Science Tech unlocking in 21 days, which is pretty quick. Then closed cycle hyd hydrolox engines, so RS-25 and stuff like that. Long-term habitation, makes sense, that leads to colonization. So that has a lot of the USI colonization parts. And then actuators, which is required for other things. Aside from that, we should pay attention to TAC life support. Moonport 1 will need to be resupplied after 60 days. Spaceport 2, uh, no pressing need for that. Those two are on a long-term study mission on the spaceport. Um, and of course one of the occupants of Moonport 1 is expected to descend to the surface of the moon to join Chris Leon, so the supply situation there might not be as dire bill. Probably, we should probably resupply it in 60 days is the idea. I believe in our storage we do have a Moonport resupply hanging out there ready to go. Okay, engine off with the floats. And the second stage is ignited. 
after this, and uh, I think we will be able to get to the station before having to deal with this particular maneuver node. It depends on exactly how far out the moon is in at this time frame. The moon does get closer and further away from the Earth, and it's a quicker transfer when it's closer. But it probably will be done in five days. And then we have to take care of that Jupiter mission. And perhaps a Titan shot as well. Actually, uh, the Jupiter mission, the Titan shot, and even this Ganymede lander we'll probably have to take care of before we can proceed with other things. The Ganymede lander is actually a Europa lander, so that's particularly special. And then we have a little bit of a window of 50 days there to take care of some of our other lunar business. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. And that is done. Well, somehow, even with a mid-course adjustment, our inclination situation is pretty bad compared to what I normally try for. Uh, yeah, we even have a mid-course adjustment plotted and it's still like 22 degrees off. So, not the greatest thing. And that's surprising since our relative inclination with respect to the moon... I've got Moonport 1 targeted right now. Relative inclination with respect to the moon is only 0.7 degrees. So something's off. But anyway, throttle up, and I'll just activate engine like this. Timing's probably a little bit off. Okay, and stop. Alright, burn complete. Moon periapsis of 199 kilometers. Let's replot the mid-course adjustment. And what we particularly want is the descending node to be at our periapsis so we can do the burn for orbit around the moon at the same time as we correct it. So that's going away from periapsis and that pushes it towards periapsis. And there we have a tangency but uh, the gap is 24 degrees which is huge. Taking a look at that versus the orbit of the station, but we will uh, we'll solve that once we get to it. Okay, well we'll just try and use up this stage, and let's get started with it. But that will not correct all of the inclination, nor will it get us into a tight orbit. We'll correct the rest of the inclination at apoapsis using the pod and then aim for a rendezvous with the station. Okay, let's ditch this stage now. Well, okay, that's in reverse. <laughs> the stage ditched us. Okay, getting a uh, encounter. And let's finish it off with some RCS. Closest approach distance going down. Come on, we should be able to get pretty close. Uh, okay, 2.6 kilometers. Now I don't want to bring our next Kerbal down to the surface immediately because the moon base is currently out of alignment. We would rather wait until the moon base comes into daylight and then send the Kerbal down then. So right now, I don't know if we could see, where is it? Uh, it's right here, so it would take quite a severe inclination correction to try and hit it now. So we're going to wait until it's under the orbit here, and then transfer a Kerbal down. That's a little bit tricky, because I can't easily set a Kerbal alarm clock timer for that. But we can estimate how long it's going to be. We're talking about if the entire arc is half of the rotation of the moon, this is 7 days. So we're talking about 10, 11 days. Something like 10 days, maybe. And we are approaching with a uh, good closest approach distance, but we do need to check uh, which docking port we can dock to. It should be the same docking port that the other lander was at, but I need to be able to see where that is in relation to us. So let's pop on over. Okay, um, it looks like we're coming in from that side. And this port, that's an Apollo docking system. Really, we need this port. Okay. So we're, we should be aiming for this side over here and not directly 
where we're lined up for. Okay, looking at the alarm clock lineup, we will take care of these three missions first and then come back and bring the Kerbal down to the surface. Probably we'll bring the next Kerbal down to the surface in the next episode. Best not to do it in this episode anyway because it's a repeat of what we just did. And um, hopefully I'll get it done a little bit more efficiently than I did this time of Chrislian. But we'll have to see. And magnetism and docking. Come on, game. All right, we are docked. Everything is good. We'll leave this be. Let me restart. Uh, I've already done a couple of missions and probably things will be smoother if I do. And then we'll take a look at our interplanetary missions already underway. All right, our first mission is going to be this minor correction that will lead us to an IO encounter and we will be able to handle the IO encounter before turning to something else which is always nice. So let us bring it to the node. I don't have to worry about orientation because we've got an RTG. Maybe, I, well, yeah I guess now that I've gotten rid of remote tech I can turn on SAS at will which will allow me to use persistent rotation. We'll, we'll reorient it in a sec. Let's get this node done first. This will also save me the problem of having to spam the science instead of doing it at exactly the right location. Okay. All right, all right. Don't follow the node. And we've got a very nice and tight IO periapsis. Okay, so let's have it swing this way off SAS. Let me just reactivate it. Okay, let's see if this works. And let me uh, set an alarm for when we enter the SOI of IO so that we don't overshoot that while I have the UI off. Okay, time warping doesn't really make sense to have the dish pointed at Jupiter. You'd want it pointed away at Ju uh, uh, away from Jupiter, sorry. But could be worse. We are about to enter the SOI of Io. Okay, time to do all the sciences. 48 science for that one. No comms. Uh-oh. What? But this is technically a comms device. I I, I think I have a problem now. Mm, it doesn't read this as a comms device for for science transmission. That's weird. That is very strange. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Space Center. Well, let let's take a look at settings. This is. Well, I should have anticipated some sort of problem with removing remote tech. It couldn't be that easy. Okay, well I've put remote tech back in, but we will have to uh, disable signal delay because we're already in the SOI of IO and I don't have time to prep the science ahead of time now. So let's turn to it and see whether it works or not. Let's hope that it does. Ah, uh, well, no luck. Unfortunately, first of all, it says this range zero. Second of all, it says no target. So it doesn't have a target. Um, let me go back to the Space Center and see what happens if we say remote tech disabled and then come back. Okay, well, we better get something done here quickly because we're getting close to IO now. Uh, let's see, log visual observations, no more samples, review data, okay, transmit, okay, now it can transmit data. So we have to keep the remote tech plugin in the folder, but disable it, and everything will be alright. Everything will be alright now. Just above IO's highlands. So if we go over a different biome, it'll give us some extra science, but otherwise... Ooh, 90 science. But that's not biome dependent right there. Okay, 75 science for the magnetometer. 
and telemetry analysis. Now we're above lowlands, so we should be able to do something different. Volcanic hotspots now. Wow, we're really moving through these biomes very quickly. I can't even get all the signs that we could have gotten. Volcanic snows now. Jeez. We really need to spend more time around Io because there's a lot of biomes, even on this quick flyby. Up, oh, volcanic flows even. That's a totally different biome. And snows. Snows and flows. Not with the gravity scale. Oh, volcanic snows again. I thought we already got volcanic snows with... Oh, maybe we're still having the problem with some of the instruments not properly sending their data. Yeah, I think that's a problem with the gravity scan right now. Temperature scan, maybe? Anyway, we've got a lot of science. We're all the way up to 2,000. I had already spent some science and brought us down to like 800. So we've got um, more than 1,000 science from this flyby of Io, which is excellent. But I think we're pretty much done here. We will exit and then plan a flyby of something else. Let's get out of Io's SOI first, though. Well, there's an encounter with Europa. But the Delta V necessary seems to be more than we've got. Well, it seems that way, but that's just in this stage. We can ditch that and we have a bit more in the probe itself, so we'll go with that. 18 days, huh? It's possible that we could get an encounter for less if we waited a little bit longer, but I don't feel like waiting. I think this mission has already fulfilled quite a few scientific objectives, and after this uh, Europa flyby, we'll probably just uh, let it hang out and just, uh, yeah, it will be a legacy mission after that. Okay, so the next thing is this Titan shot mission. Okay, so this mission is going to encounter Dion, similar to what we did with uh, the previous mission in Io, but this is going to take a little bit longer, nine days, so we'll probably have to leave this for the next episode. So we'll just handle this burn. Delay of gratification. It's a tough thing, but obviously a major part of any space program. Technically, only this little parcel right here needs to go into the atmosphere of Titan. That's interesting. It didn't want to turn on SAS. Um, is there sort of a stealth... Okay, so if I turn this off and press T, it should turn on SAS, right? But there seems to be a stealth signal delay going on here somehow. Seems like there are a lot of problems associated with trying to disable or delete remote tech. Not the easiest thing in the world. Once you go with the remote tech package, they don't let you leave. Okay, so 79 kilometers there. Let's add the SOI change. And on to the Ganymede lander, which I believe is aimed for Europa. Okay, we are basically at the node, and we need to get this burn going. This is going to capture around Jupiter at approximately where Europa's orbit is. So, maybe not the optimal situation, but it was convenient. Well, it doesn't seem to be gimbling these engines properly. Hmm. That is intensely annoying. This is not going to be very efficient for us. Let me uh, switch them off. We really can't have this lack of efficiency here. Well, it's just getting worse and worse as far as trying to aim at where we're supposed to be going. This is very annoying. Okay, well, maybe I'll try some sort of spin stabilization thing. I don't know. So, we're attempting sloppy spin stabilization. <laughs> okay, well, spin stabilization has worked better than anything else. And 
I guess I'll leave it there. Not entirely sure why it's set, I set it to that particular level, but let's add a maneuver to perhaps flatten our orbit. Okay, well, now we have a plan. It'll cost about uh, 1,900 meters per second altogether. It consists of one maneuver there and another one there after five days. And then we will have a Europa encounter in nine days. And that encounter will occur basically with us uh, very close to in orbit around Europa. So let's do this one burn in one day. Okay, we are now going to ditch the previous stage. Hmm. See, now, there's not supposed to be a signal delay, remote tech. Why are you acting like there's a signal delay? Yeah, spacebar, it didn't allow me to decouple immediately. But right-clicking on the part allowed me to decouple. <sighs> well, on this stage, we easily have enough to make orbit around Europa, and that leaves us with a bunch of fuel in the probe itself to actually make the landing. This probe has enough to make a landing on Ganymede, so I would assume that it would also have enough to land on Europa, but we'll see. Okay, we have completed that burn, which leaves us with the next burn, which will give us our Europa encounter. Alright, so let me add that to the alarm clock. And that that will probably be the next thing that we do. We'll have to we'll take a peek at the situation with the lunar lander and whether we need to do that before we cover these four days. It's possible. And so we'll, we'll be landing on the moon so often that you'll get sick and tired of that. And uh, in the next episode, you can expect that we're going to land on Europa. And we're going to fly by Dion, the moon of Saturn. And so uh, fun times ahead. I mean, this is serious stuff here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.